All right, so we are continuing with our creature scape. So just to review, I am using files from assignment one and assignment two. So in my master folder here, which I drag out from documents, keep on my desktop while I'm working, um, I stole the PSD file, or I opened up the PSD file, the working file from my landscape, opened that up, and then I brought into it the PNG file, the combined uh, PNG creature that's neatly cut out from assignment two. And I brought that in as a, a smart object onto the assignment one file, and then I renamed it assignment three creature scape. And so I'm going to keep all of those assets here. I just re renamed the assignment one file now that I have the creature in it because I'm going to be making a lot of changes to it. I showed you some past student examples in the last video. So now let me show you like past instructor examples. These are all in photo bucket. And to point out uh, the two things we're going to upload. So the first is what's called an overlay layer. And this shows us the shadows we're putting in. You can see the cast shadows, some of the the, uh, the burning of the environment that helps sink this creature in. Of course, we're also going to color correct and we're going to dodge and burn on the creature itself and maybe um, you know adjust its lighting so that it fits in. So you see that cast shadow on the rock and kind of the, the dust and debris around it to fit it into the, the scene. Here we have just a simple cast shadow. You also have some kind of cold, misty breath and that helps integrate this creature into this scene and then behind some texture fills. Uh, here you have this creature splashing the water at its feet, right? So that's a new element added in to the landscape in order to help integrate it. So there's lots of ways to integrate your creature into the given landscape, some simple, some more complicated. This one has a lot of dodging and burning, a lot of atmosphere, a lot of cast shadow, because this creature is very big, so it casts a big shadow. And you want your creature to take up at least 25% you know, of the overall composition and to be in a fairly clear focal point. So this is maybe even about like only 20%, but it's in such a clear focal point, we had to do a lot of, of changes to the environment to get it to sink in. And you want your creature to be fairly in focus. So the middle ground, the foreground, those tend to be better choices. On and on and on. So we're going to learn how to do this kind of overlay layer with our current creatures. But then the other thing we have to keep in mind is we are not uh, beholding to our fantasy landscape. So we can change it in any way we like. And I already shrank this coral a little bit. I can also not just change the color and the lighting on my creature, but I can change the color and the lighting on my landscape to help it match. I can also get rid of certain things. Like I don't need these little flower fronds on my coral anymore. They kind of get in the way of my creature's head, which I don't love. This one I'm okay with. All right. um, but I might pose it differently. So we're going to learn how to pose using warp tool in a different way, in a more selective way, we're gonna use a tool called puppet warp, where we can selectively pose our creature or maybe pose parts of our landscape. So maybe this is a good uh, way to introduce that. So and we're gonna use puppet warp pretty heavily when we animate some of us, depending on what we're animating. So I've got this nice foreground element, but without the texture fills or with the coloring of my creature, it just looks a little off. So I'm first going to start with the basic direct adjustments of playing with the levels. And I'm going to brighten it a little bit. And playing with the color balance. Take a, little, a lot of that yellow out. See the difference that makes, and then playing with the overall hue saturation because honestly, I want my creature to be more of the focal point, so I'm going to take the saturation down of that foreground element. Now, what's great about hue saturation is you can do the whole thing. This is set on master mode, right? But I can also isolate just the yellows and I can take those down a little bit, and I can isolate just the reds, take that down a little bit. 
and then especially take the greens and take that down. And I can even change the hues of the green a little bit if I want to. Maybe make them a little bit more yellow. And I can darken them a little. So that makes the shadows a little maybe too dark. So now we're getting into really fine tune color adjustments and levels adjustments. So I like that, but the shadows underneath are a little too strong. So I'm going to go to levels again, and I'm going to limit the shadows right there. And then maybe darken the midtones. There we go. So now that's looking a lot more kind of integrated with this scene already. Compare that to how I opened it. And you can see how much stronger this was. Right. And now it looks like it's in the scene a little bit better. Okay, so now I want to pose this little flower. This thing that was a focal point before, this little bud. I want to get it out of the way of my creature. Because it's a little confusing. when you, In design, when you have two things line up like this, and it feels like an unintentional touching, of edges, that's called a tangency. And you want to avoid tangencies. So I could cut that whole thing out, but instead I'm going to use this tool called Puppet Warp. So if I have that layer nicely cut out, just like we have our creature nicely cut out, the difference is my creature is still a smart object, right? So it won't allow me to erase from it until I rasterize. It will allow me, in this newest version of Photoshop, starting in 2018, and going on to the 2020 version, it will allow me to warp it even as a smart object, which is pretty amazing, but it won't allow me to do some of the major things until I rasterize it. So for now, I'm gonna leave it just as a, um, a smart object, but this one's already rasterized, so I can start to play with this, and if I'm worried about it, I can always make a duplicate. And this is now the third duplicate I've made of this coral, right? So you can see all the changes I've made to it so far, because you never know what might be the best. Okay, so now I'm on the layer that's nicely cut out. I'm going to go to edit, and then I'm going to go where above where transform and free transform are to this tool called Puppet Warp. Now Puppet Warp is just like Warp, except Warp cuts whatever the layer is into a box with nine squares, and you can warp those tangencies at those squares, right? This maps that whole shape with kind of a chicken wire, a polygon count of triangles. And I have to set anchor points where I want it to move. It's like a little grommet doll. And I need to anchor it where I don't want it to move, right, as well. So I don't want this palm frond to move. I don't want it to, to move too much here. I don't want it to move too much here. And I want it to stay in the corner there. So that way, when I move this, it's going to kind of puppet just that element, right? And I can move that palm frond. Move the coral. And if I need more flexibility, I can add another anchor point and kind of move it there. And then you hit return. And you can see the difference. It's like it's waving to us. Now, because I used the anchor points, it didn't move all over the place, right? So that's how you can use Puppet Warp correctly. Let me make a duplicate and show you how to use it incorrectly. So if I do Edit Puppet Warp on this new duplicate, and I just anchor here, and then I start moving it, it's going to move the whole thing, right? If I just do an anchor here and an anchor here and start moving it, then it's going to rotate on that place. So you need multiple anchor points, which is a bit of a pain, but then you can make quite a bit of difference. And we're gonna try this with, our, with my creature a little bit later. All right, delete that layer. I want this one. Let's see how that looks with my creature. Uh, much improved, right? And now the problem is my creature has all of these nice shadows, nice highlights, really detailed. This is a little bit more washed out. 
because I took the color down and I took the shadows down. But because it was so saturated, now it looks a little washed out. So what can I do? Well, I can use levels and I can just take the whole thing and darken the midtones, right? But again, that makes things really saturated. So instead, I'm going to use dodge and burn. We've had more experience with those now. So I'm going to use the burn tool. I'm going to burn just the midtones at an exposure of less than 30, right? A nice soft brush, pretty large. And I'm going to selectively darken, you know, things in the composition that help. So I can make some of these shadows a little bit darker still. But I don't have to do it everywhere all at once, especially when they're so colorful. And if I need to selectively take color away, I can use the sponge tool. Which I might do down here, because there's still a lot of purple in those shadows. So I use the sponge, same way, set to desaturate. Oh, that helps a lot. So already, just in the first 10 minutes, I've changed it from this to this, right? Which is helping my creature to kind of fit within this scene a little bit better. Notice the other things. Where is my creature in this environment? Well, their back foot is on the water there. And that water looks pretty far away. So I need that foot to be clearly in front of that rock. And maybe I need that foot to be a little deeper down because this isn't the Jesus creature that can walk on water, right? So I need to set the feet in the water here. Um, also, I look at the back of my creature and it's pretty sharp and in focus, but that background mountain is pretty sharp and in focus. So maybe I want a little texture fill between those two to soften that focus. So there are little things I can do to, to fit this creature in. So now I'm going to play with puppet work. So I can delete the other coral towers, right? Because I've got my new element that I like. Now I'm going to rast... Well, before I rasterize, I'm going to duplicate Command-J, my smart object creature. And then I will rasterize the copy. And that's just so if I want to make my creature a lot bigger, I still have that option. Now I can puppet warp it. Edit puppet warp. And where do I want it to anchor, right? I want to be able to control the position of its snout. So I'm going to anchor there. And then this is where the anatomy comes in. Where do the bones bend? Well, it bends at the neck, bends at the spine and the rib cage, right? Um, and then I want to anchor one foot, maybe right there, and anchor another foot right there. And then I want to take this back foot, I want to anchor it at the front of the back paw and the back of the back paw, because those are two points of joints at the, the ankle joint, at the knee joint. Now the problem is, Puppet Warp, you know, is not magic. It doesn't, the computer doesn't know that this is a creature. And so when I have one foot running into the front foot, it doesn't know that there's a separation between that. So if I try to pose this too much, it's always going to stick these together. So instead, I'm going to work mostly with this back foot, but I could drag this edge down a little bit and see what I can get with it. And then, of course, I can play with the tail at the tip and then at the base. So that's quite a few points. Let's see how that works. If I move the head, uh -huh. it works, but notice it also kind of shrinks the head, right? Because I haven't done a lot of anchors to the, to the whole skull. Um, if I do the neck, if I do the rib cage, at the back. I can do one right on the chest, which helps for like breath. So like animating in real time. And you can create as many anchor points as you want, but the one that I'm most interested in right now is moving this foot down. So I can move the, the hip down, the front of the foot down, get it in front of that rock. from the hip. I might straighten the tail a little bit, bring down the hip because I'm bringing down the foot. 